Well, hello and welcome to our Thought for the Day for Thursday, the 4th of June. Uh, my name is Graham Hoslett. Um, I'm going to start with a song. I'm singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. What a glorious feeling, I'm happy again. Do you want to join in? I'm laughing at clouds, so dark up above. The sun's in my heart, and I'm ready for... What's the last word? Love. Isn't that nice? Of course, that was Gene Kelly in Singing in the Rain, uh, the film. Um, I don't know what the weather was like yesterday where you are, but after days and weeks of hot, sunny weather, it rained here in Guildford yesterday. Not much and not enough. The gardens and fields need much more. But after days of hot weather, I went out and stood in the garden for a few minutes. It was so nice to feel the rain on my face. I don't know if you've ever danced down the street or stamped in the puddles with an umbrella um, above your head. But one of the things I enjoy doing is going out with my umbrella in the rain uh, when it's raining. Whether it's the sound of the rain falling on the umbrella makes me think of camping or whether it's just the wonder of being out in a shower yet being closely sheltered in it. I love walking with my umbrella while it's raining. Not perhaps to the same extent as Gene Kelly in the film. You won't see me dancing down the street, splashing in the puddles. But there is something I enjoy about being out in the rain under an umbrella. Uh, yesterday, Helen led us thinking about the first part of Psalm 69. The psalmist facing unfair, undue criticism, falsely accused being attacked for things he hadn't done. Helen said that in verse 5 we can see that the psalmist knows he isn't completely innocent, he isn't completely blameless. In verse 5 of 69, Psalm 69, you know my folly, O God, my guilt is not hidden from you. And Helen said sometimes uh, in Psalms we can get the impression that the, effectively that the writer points the finger at others without recognising that he is partly to blame. Helen said it's refreshing to see that in verse 5 the writer knows he isn't perfect but even so in verse 4 uh, he says those who hate me without reason outnumber the hairs of my head many are my enemies without cause those who seek to destroy me. Helen said yesterday that this was of course what Jesus faced falsely accused unjustly condemned and crucified. And as those who believe in Jesus, we shouldn't be surprised if we sometimes face scorn and ridicule in the world for our faith. So in the second part of Psalm 69 today, verses 19 to 20 can be true for us sometimes. You know how I am scorned, disgraced and shamed. All my enemies are before you. Scorn has broken my heart and has left me helpless. I looked for sympathy, but there was none for comforters, but I found none. And verse 20, 21, a, a direct prophecy of what happened to Jesus. In verse 21, they put gall in my food and gave me vinegar for my thirst. In Matthew 27, verse 34, they, we read, they offered Jesus wine mixed with gall to drink before they crucified him, but he refused it. But then just before he died, one of those standing there, Matthew says, uh, ran and got a sponge, filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. And then in verse 50 of Matthew 27, when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. So Psalm 69 verse 21 is a, a direct prophecy of Jesus. But maybe we too will face scorn and derision um, for our faith. So in verses 22 to 28, the psalmist, scorned, disgraced and shamed, asks the Lord not to forget or forgive his enemies. 
In verses 27 and 28, charge them with crime upon crime. Do not let them share in your salvation. May they be blotted out of the book of life and not be listed with the righteous. But as Jesus was being uh, crucified, Jesus instead prayed, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they're doing. Uh, real revenge, God's revenge, is not the punishment of those who mock us for our faith in him, but the conversion of those who mock us for our faith in him. Uh, this, this is what we should really be praying for. This is what we should be seeking. Not that our enemies should be blotted out of the book of life, but that the Lord's Revenge would be to see them written in. But anyway, what I wanted to share with you today from the second part of Psalm 69 is, is really one simple prayer of one simple verse. Verse 29. Psalm 69, verse 29, where David simply says, I am in pain and distress. May your salvation, O God, protect me. I am in pain and distress. May your salvation, O God, protect me. Maybe that is you today. For whatever reason, I am in pain. Physical pain, emotional pain, spiritual pain. Maybe that is you today. Or if not in pain, I am in distress. Maybe mental distress. Maybe that is you today. Distressed. Anxious, worried, grieving, depressed. Maybe that might be a, a good prayer for you today. I am in pain and distress. Oh God, protect me. But I like the way verse 29 of Psalm 69 is so explicit. I am in pain and distress. May your salvation, O oh God, protect me. I like the way it says, may your salvation, O God, protect me. God doesn't offer us any old salvation, anyone's salvation. He doesn't offer us shelter under anyone's wing, but his. May your salvation, O God, protect me. He offers us all a salvation that he himself has worked that he himself in Jesus has worked out, purchased and paid for. May your salvation, O oh God, protect me. I, I don't know if you have an umbrella. And I don't know if you've got an umbrella, if it is any good. Is it big enough? Is it strong enough? And is it robust enough? You see, it is all too possible when in pain and trouble to turn to or trust in that which ultimately cannot save. To turn for comfort and strength to that which, which will not last forever. But the Lord offers us a shelter that can withstand any storm. Psalm 69 verse 30 goes on, I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an ox, more than a bull with its horns and hooves. The poor will see and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts live. Verse 33, the Lord hears the needy and does not despise his captive people. I will praise God's name in song in verse 30. It is possible to sing even in the rain. If you are in pain and distress today, make God's salvation, God's salvation, your shelter. He offers it freely to us all. Uh, you might want to make this your prayer today. Psalm 69 verse 29. I am in pain and distress. May your salvation, O God, Protect me.